That is ridiculous looking. <laughs> So today is going to be all about create trains and how to transport items long distance from one location to another. Now I have seen on the map, there is a structure that I am currently flying to. And this structure, if I remember correctly, houses bees. And it's basically a pre set up structure for create that basically has bees already set up and automated. It has a really pretty building that encompasses all of this with that being said i've got to get to it and i noticed it on the map when i was kind of scouring the map kind of looking at what's around and this is going to be the perfect foundation for getting into the trains now, along the way I, I can't like not stop in and make sure i check these chests oh it didn't have anything in it unfortunately all right we're almost there now on the map it's this building right here and this looks very familiar and i remember this in other mod packs um, and if this is the building that I think it is, it is also very integrated. Yes, this structure right here. And it is quite beautiful. It has villagers in it, all kinds of fun stuff. But this is what I'm most interested in. Yes, this building right here, which already has the basic setup ready to go to add more hives, to breed bees, and to get bees set up and automated and uh, you may be wondering why do i want to automate bees well i want to automate bees because we can use the honeycombs to make sure our copper doesn't turn from the whole copper color to green well and yeah green while i do like it and i do like the mix sometimes i don't actually want the green so what i can do with this is i should be able to hopefully i can get rid of these guys i should be able to take these bees here automate them and send it back to my base. Yeah, that is going to be fun. And we can use create trains to do this. Now, first, however, let's take a look at this building because this building in itself is pretty darn cool. And this is a part of the integrated structures, right? These are so nice looking. There's chests that have like supplementary things like more slingshots, more shears to harvest those bees, a whole kitchen. Like just having access to this building is very nice. We got our own set of villagers that are just waiting to be used for things. I mean, look at the, the honey blocks, everything we need, everything we need in here. Very honey themed, very bee themed. I love this, <laughs> it's so good. So now that we visited that cool structure, this is the main part, this thing right here. This is where we could set up all kinds of automation. It's already housed and everything for our bees. They should not be able to get out once we add some more and breed these bees together. Um, now, we do need to kind of solve the villager opening the door problem because I don't want these guys to be able to escape. That would not be good. Uh, speaking of breeding, we can go ahead and get these guys started. Um, but yeah, I, I need to basically make a portal. And so I need to kind of figure this out, right? Um, I have to keep this in mind. When you're setting up trains, you really have to have a the broad design in your head ready to go. So that way you can start routing your trains in a way, for example, like this right here, you can start routing them in a way that makes sense. And so look at this, we're gonna start filling these with honey. So we can automate this, we can have this automated, it'll automatically extract the honey, and then we can do things with the honey. We could also have harvesters that are harvesting, uh, like deployers that are harvesting the honeycombs off of some of these. And then we can route that all into one train. And so the train, for example, can come through the back here and we can have all of these items routing to the back. But this is where I got to figure out how are we going to get a train from here to back to our base, which is all the way over here. And this is where nether portals are going to come into play. We can actually send trains through the nether. Okay, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead because first we should probably just build a regular train network, like just in our base or around our base. I mean, I still though need to get the portal set up while I'm over here. I mean, I did make it all the way over here. So I think the back here is going to be great. And what I wanna do is I wanna keep in mind, I want the track to sort of be uh, kind of leaving a couple block spacing 
away from this. So we have a little bit of room. So I'm thinking like right about here is probably a good space. And so I could actually put a portal in the wall. We can have the train come over here and then it can go back. Um, and I think that'll be pretty interesting. So to do this, we have like three blocks away. There could be train tracks right here. So I need to set up a portal right now and use the whole vanilla portal method uh, to basically get a portal predefined. So that way, when we actually go to set up the portal in the nether, it will automatically link to this location. So to be able to do that, there are some things that you have to do first, and that is you have to sort of build the portal that you're gonna use in the overworld first. And trains will go through them, and they will go through, believe it or not, a normal sized portal, but I recommend making it a little bit bigger. And the reason is, is because your passengers, I have noticed sometimes can die. That is if they're not a blaze burner. And well, we'll probably end up using a blaze burner anyways, because they're the best thing to use when you're actually sending things through the nether. All right, anyways, this right here is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a regular portal and I'm gonna build it about this size. I think that feels pretty straightforward, pretty normal, just like this. And that is right on track, <laughs> right on track with what we were wanting to do. And so all I have to do is light this, but I don't wanna go through it. And I also wanna write down my exact coordinates that I have set right here on this middle block. So now with those coordinates set, I will go ahead and light the portal, but don't step in it. Don't, don't do that. Uh, Cause that will actually link it to where we don't want it to be linked. Cause I wanna actually set the portal in the dimension so that way I can set its location in the nether. And that's gonna be very important. Now, back at the base, a couple of episodes ago, I ended up making the ability to make some tracks. And we also got all of the stuff set up to make sturdy sheets and to allow us to be able to make train related things. And so here we are. I want to build a train track that goes around the base, around this area. Uh, and I do wanna leave a two block gap between the walls and this, and I wanna build the tracks basically right here. And so the tracks are gonna look just like this going around. And I do have to clear this whole area out to prepare for this. That's of course, I, I was already ready to do that. Um, but yes, I am going to build this completely around our base. So all the way around this whole area. Now some tips when putting in the rails, if you put a block in your offhand, for example, these spruce boards, it will fill in holes. So I can go over here and I will build this up one, just like so, and I'll place my rails in. And when I do this, it will actually place in the wood, just like you see right here underneath the tracks. Now, for example, if there's dirt underneath it, it won't do that, but there is another tool called the roller that you can put onto a train that will do that. It can replace the stuff underneath the tracks for you. Now, corners for the trains can be a little bit complicated, uh, and it, it may require a little bit more thought when uh, originally designing how far away you want it from corners. So right now I have this two blocks away, and if I was to kind of start to corner this, I would go ahead and click this, and I would pull it over here, and I start to notice, uh-oh, uh, it doesn't really appear like it's going to be able to corner very well, it needs to be, it looks like three blocks away uh, because if I place this down, this will be one, two, three. And then this would mean that uh, we are, yeah, th this just is not gonna work, right? So maybe my initial design here was a little bit off uh, or I could potentially try to move this back and back one and then try again. So if I move it back, now we're good. So like I said, it can be a little bit complicated, uh, but you'll eventually figure out kind of where your initial tracks sort of need to be in order to pull this off. But luckily, if I go ahead and click this and I do pull this over here, and I know exactly where this is going to need to be, I can see right here is a perfect position to start this. I can go ahead and set this, make sure I'm standing at 66, and then just click, and it will automatically fill out the blocks underneath. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do corners, um, but if you kind of judge and, and if you notice that it's going to be too far out to the left or the right, you might need to move forward on your initial track you placed, uh, move forward one or move back one. 
And that's really it. I think one of my biggest complaints about tracks and in the create mod is just how big the turns actually need to be. I, I know it makes sense. It does make sense. But yeah, whenever you start to do loops and stuff, you'll realize that you have to make things way bigger than you initially probably thought. So now I effectively have a track that runs entirely around the base. And now I'm going to start filling everything in around this. And I've also, I kind of want to terraform at least around in this water. And this is going to be the hardest part is I want to terraform around this with this kind of slanting off like this down into the water or at least try to. So now I'm setting up for a portal. Now that I got this whole thing sort of lined out, I got all of the dirt placed in. Uh, and so I went ahead and placed my track and now I'm branching off. Now, when you do this, there's a couple of things that we're gonna have to keep in mind. If we have more than one train, we're gonna actually need train signals because trains that are merging onto new tracks uh, could end up crashing into another train. And so train signals will hopefully prevent that. And if you put train signals, you're going to have to have a train signal before the start uh, before the start of every intersection. So you're going to need one where if you're going to have trains going both directions, you're going to need to have a signal that is going in this direction and this direction all in front of the intersection. Uh, and that's for all sides. You're gonna need a lot of train signals if you're planning on managing a rail network that has trains going in multiple directions. But now that's if you plan on having more than one train on this track. Uh, if we just use one train, then we would be fine. Now back to the portal here. Over here, I am prepping up my obsidian because I think I'm gonna need a bit more obsidian for all of this. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a rather nice looking bigger portal right here. Um, that the trains are going to go into. And this the this portal right here is the one that I actually want to link to the, the roof of the nether. And I think that's going to make this a lot easier to manage. Um, if we put it on the roof, setting up tra uh, rail networks up there to be able to go to different locations, oh, we'll just be a dream. So if we go up one, two, three, four, five, we have a five block gap here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. I think this will be a really nice tall portal that'll have a pretty cool look to it. That's why I wanted a little bit more material here. Um, now, just like our other portal, I am going to have to write the locations down and you do not want to step through this because we're gonna be linking from within the portal. So I gotta make that very clear. I'm also gonna uh, branch this up a little bit and give it a nice looking sort of steeple. I think that'll look pretty cool. So that's three blocks, up one, two, and connect. Uh, and then we can add some st uh, stuff in that. Um, <laughs> ignore the way it looks right now, I've gotta fix that. <laughs> that was the, the goofiest thing I've done in a while. Oh man, this is why I, I talk and build and this th these things happen. There we go, now, now that looks better. And I like to put a little block in the center of it. It's gonna make it look very nice. And so standing in the middle of this, I want to go ahead and write down the coordinates, which is negative 47, 66. Uh, even though the middle number doesn't necessarily matter, the one on the left and right do. So you need your X and Y, or sorry, your X and Z, but you do not need your Y value, which is your vertical, y, uh, vertical level. Um, so I just need to light this, but not step through it. And we are going to link this portal through the overworld, but we've got to get to the roof of the nether. And I'm really hoping, because I didn't test this, I'm hoping that I should be able to just do this. And to, to get on the roof, it's very simple. You just need a ladder and you also need an ender pearl. Now, before you go onto the roof, just make sure you have a few checks, making sure you have enough material to make a portal. Um, and then also make sure you have flint and steel because you don't want to get trapped up there and have to die in order to go get your stuff back. Now, in my case, I can access my terminal in any dimension cross dimensionally. So even if I did mess up, I still should be able to get back. And I also have recall and I even have a Tim pad. So I have multiple ways of getting back. But yeah, that's something to note. Now I'm in the nether and I need to get to the roof. And I think the best way to get to the roof is this way. Now, 256 is build height, uh, and I noticed I'm at 176, so I should be very close to actually hitting the bedrock layer all the way up here. Um, and so the easiest way to do this is to get to the bedrock that you see right here, clear out a few areas around it, um, and let's see, I need to find what appears to be like the closest area up 
Uh, and this, this right here feels like that size. And then we'll just use a couple of ladders just like this to get up here. Have the ender pearl in your hand. And then you're going to look right at the ladder and then you're going to shoot an ender pearl. This should hopefully take you to the top. Now it does look like I might need to find a spot that's a little bit higher, but we were actually able to see up there. I've just got to find an area that is a bit taller. I think this area right here looks like it's that way. Right about here. So hopefully this gets us there. There we go. That's a spot. Um, it's just a little bit of trial and error, but we should be able to get up there. No problem. Especially since I was able to see it. So Ender Pearl and perfect. <laughs> just hold forward and we are now on the roof of the nether. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay. So now that I'm up here, I need to take that, that number from our base and I need to basically divide that by eight. Yeah. Uh, or you could just use a calculator. It's probably best if you just use an online calculator that can calculate the, the nether portal position from the overworld. So now in my case, after entering in the numbers, I ended up getting negative six and 29. So I now need to find the actual number position negative six here and uh, also find 29. So it should be in this direction somewhere. So now this block right here is exactly at negative six and 29. So this is where I am going to build out the portal. And uh, for this particular portal, I am going to build out a three by three. That should be fine. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five tall. Uh, nothing super fancy, just making sure that my create trains will successfully get through here. And just like that. Perfect. So this one is the one that I want to walk through. And that, that should link to the one in the overworld, the one we just built. It shouldn't connect to our, our other one that exists. This should connect specifically to the big one that we just created. If everything is working correctly, and there we are. Perfect. It is now successfully linked. Now, we can go back into this portal. And what we need to do, <laughs> we got a visitor. What we need to do is go back through this one and now link up our other portal and then build our train network that are going to link the two. Now, in the overworld, this is nearly 3,000 blocks in distance away from our base. But in the nether, it's just 350 blocks, actually a little bit less than that, just roughly 300 blocks away. So it is a huge, huge difference and way easier to build your portals in the roof of nether rather than the overworld. So now heading to the B area, I've just ignited this. And if everything is correct, we should be linked to the B portal. And there we go. Good. Oh, now we just got to figure out and make sure that our train goes into this properly. So what I'm going to need to do is grab a track. Um, and what I've got to figure out and, and go ahead and set up is making sure the track goes into this from this direction. Uh, and this is going to help me understand from the portal side of things uh, by doing this. We are going to send this in like this. This is going to help me know what side of this portal this is all linked to. So whenever we travel through here, we should be able to see what direction this is pointing. And it does look like, is it the correct direction? It is. It's pointing in this direction, which means that uh, we got to figure out now the direction that this is going to have the trains going in and out from. Now, from our main base, it looks like this is going the correct direction as well. Oh, this could not align up any perfectly. So we just need to basically bridge a track that is going to make its way over here. So coming from the main portal, we can have this drop down to the exact Y level that this is on and then just have a straight rail line going all the way here. And so connecting the tracks up works just like this. I'm just going to continue in a straight line all the way there, just like you see. Now, before connecting into the main system here, I just wanna make sure this drops down and flows out appropriately. Uh, now you can hold down control to make it a smoother transition, but I'm perfectly fine with it having this sort of sloped transition like that. I feel like that's great. And I'm out of tracks. Look at that. So I'm back to making more tracks. Yep. And this will take a little bit of time. So now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, it's now time to dive into Create's most powerful logistical powerhouse. And that is going to be the trains themselves and the schedules associated to them. So 
how do we actually build the train? So the first thing I need to do to actually build a train is I need to place down a train station. So all I got to do is to find what direction I want it facing. And this can be changed, by the way, once we get the train built. And you can also remove the train station once the train's built. So just let's go ahead and for right now, we'll just go ahead and make a train. So I'm going to have it go this direction facing out this way. And then I just need to place it nearby. And then all I have to do is open this up and hit create a new train. And this is going to give us a little blue dot right here or a little blip. And that's where we can use a train casing. Um, so a train casing, we will basically just right click it right here. And that creates a bogey. Um, and by default, it looks like this, but there's a couple of different things we can do to this. We can change it by right clicking it with this. Um, and there's a mod in here that actually makes the bogeys invisible if you want. Um, but yes, right there is a small bogey and there's an invisible one. And I think that there is a way to adjust this bogey outside of this current one. Um, I've got to remember, I think you might be able to, on placing it initially, hold down Alt. And that allows you to pull up some different style axles. So you can see right here, there's a ton of different ones. And then there's even more this way. So we have these giant ones, it looks like. There's also this standard style. And there's all kinds of different ones. By default, I think I'm just going to stick with the basic one for right now, just to make sure everything is standard. So this is a standard style. So we have a large wheel, we have a tiny one, and then we have another one. Like all of these are pretty cool in their own right, but I'm just going to stick with this one for right now. Now on the back here, we can actually build this train out super long. We can make this a just one long continuous train, which I think is what I want to do. I think I just want to have one train that does a bunch of different tasks and we can actually add onto our train as we go along. So right here, we can make this our main train in, in itself. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back. So this is basically the block, the main block. We have one, two, three. I'm going to leave a three block gap. Then I'm going to place another one. Now, this is going to basically be uh, one train. And then we're going to have train cars that are added to the back that will actually be connected. But to be able to make this one train, we have to link them together. And to do that, we just need to simply glue blocks to these main bogies. And now for this back bogey, I'm actually going to right click this track down here. And by doing that, we'll actually get the sort of large version of this. These are the ones that are default in the create mod. I've had a little bit of weirdness when actually using these trains by using those other bogeys. Hopefully that has been fixed. Um, but in the past, I definitely have had issues with them. Uh, but you know, when it comes to like connecting to other things down the road, but for right now, this is what I'm going to go with. So I've got to come up with a train design that will be basically our main tugger train that is going to pull everything around and then we can start to build our actual accessory cars and this is going to be the most fun part at least i think so now when building this train i want to keep it to kind of a steampunky theme uh, and there's these industrial blocks that we can actually make with regular iron ingots and this is going to be really nice and i think this combined with some of the brass and also copper, for example, like a copper boiler, uh, is going to really, really kind of add things together. And I think these industrial iron blocks have a ton of uses. Um, so I want to use this and I think we have the ability, let's see, oh, we may have to use copycat blocks for these. Um, but kind of getting an idea of this sort of being the shape, like like this and, and sort of building out like a rough, rough shape for how big the actual train is going to be, I think is a good idea. And typically I like to build and then deconstruct. So that's just a style that I am so used to doing is building and then deconstructing from there. So this looks pretty darn good. And then I can add in some boilers like this. Uh, we may end up turning this into slabs and stuff. Uh, and then I noticed we also have these bells and whistles, create bells and whistles, which adds these into here. These things are going to be so cool looking when this is all put together. Oh, this is going to be great. Ooh, so I think this is going to look pretty good using some immersive engineering in this train. I've also added a oil burner smokestack and then I put a brass floodlight on the front. And this is really starting to come together. Oh, and there's going to be even more detail I want to add to this. Okay, I got a little carried away, but now we have a train. Um, so I was playing around with some of the industrial blocks. Uh, these, unfortunately, they don't have any stairs in this particular version uh, from Create. So kind of interesting. 
but they definitely fit the whole train aesthetic, especially with me going with the copper vibe and with the steel. So I now have the industrial iron, uh, a little smokestack going on here, some girders that are wrapping around the boiler, which I thought looked really good. And then I went with the copycat panels and stuff on the top. Unfortunately, we don't have copycat stairs. Uh, and then I'm using some of the bells and whistles. I also replaced the light on the front because I think the version that I was using uh, didn't work very well. So the bells and whistle ones definitely work. And uh, all we have to do now is pop in and I crouch a little bit and we now have a space for our conductor, which is gonna go right here and the train controls, which are gonna go right here, which are actually needed in order to start the train. So we do need train controls and they will go right here. And then technically a seat um, is something that would go right here. And this will allow us to conduct the train. Um, so that's going to be very nice once we actually get this going, but we can swap that seat out with a blaze burner. And that is going to ultimately allow us to have this automated. Um, and you can use any kind of mob. If you set them on a seat, you can use a lead to actually put the mob onto the seat. So, all of this is well, but now I got to glue everything together. Um, so that's going to be the challenging part. Sometimes uh, this can be very frustrating because when you're setting up the glue, it's really hard sometimes to see what all is actively being glued. But the one thing I do want to recommend is making sure that at least with your main train here, everything is connected to the main bogies there in the center. Uh, and then you can start to glue everything else from that point. And for the most part, I have all of this as one whole unit. So I should be able to just kind of glue this and then glue the front section as well to everything all the way through the back. And that should hopefully get just about everything glued in. So I think now at this point, I have everything glued in. So it appears... Um, so we should be pretty good. I do have some empty spaces, but as far as the train goes, uh, we shouldn't have this going into anything where it's going to start grabbing other blocks. Um, so all I've got to do now is assemble. And this is now an assembled train. The doors are open and we can actually set inside and click our train controls. Now it's best to hit F5. So we're outside of our train and then we can start chug -a lugging along our newly built train track. And we should be able to just fly around this entire thing. Man, that smokestack is insane. <laughs> oh my God. I wasn't expecting the smokestack to look like it does. That is ridiculous looking <laughs> going up in the air. Uh, but yes, the idea is that we should be able to take this train into, by turning right, into the nether. And we should, it'll, the whole thing will go in here, including us. And so we are now out. By the way, whenever you do go in, you do have to re-engage on the train controls to be able to start the train back up again. Uh, typically you have to get out of your seat, set back down and make sure you get back in here, <laughs> which can be kind of a struggle sometimes. Um, this is why I will not be traveling through the nether. Right. This is going to be specifically um, uh, specifically the train doing its process of going through it. And I appear to be stuck, unfortunately. Yeah. OK, there we go. I got it figured out. So we have this and I am going to actually back the train back through the portal. And you'll notice the train does go through. I did not. So, yeah, I'm going to head back and I'm going to continue to build the train cars uh, because that's the important part. And notice the train did back all the way out. It's basically teleporting this entire contraption into this dimension. So pretty darn cool. I'm going to back this all the way up. And then I should be able to just go straight. And then it will automatically, if I hold space, it'll automatically plot me right at the train station, which I can then, I, I should be able to leave the controls. Let's actually make sure we're at the train station. So I'm going to re-engage, re-approach. Hold down shift. And then I can now get out of the contraption. Uh, hopefully. Let's see. <laughs> I built it so I am permanently in here. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop out. Um, but yes, I should be able to now reassemble the or deassemble the train again. And then now I can start to actually build out the carts. And the one that I want is one for items, 
which is going to be for honeycombs. And then I'm also gonna need one for fluid as of right now, which is going to hopefully collect that honey. But that is all gonna have to wait until next episode because today we are all out of time. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm excited for the next episode to get more into the train logistics and actually get into the scheduling side of things and show you how we can actually automate with trains because it is a quite interesting process. Um, and so I look forward to that. So be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Oh boy, guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to, if I can spell thanks right, it's going to go out to Duxter. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord by becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. I look forward to seeing you guys potentially over on the Discord, so check that out, link down in the description below, and also check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, where you can find me streaming over three days a week. I know it's quite a bit, so I hope to see you there as well. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.